Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. And that's it, that smokiness, guys. That smokiness. Thank you for hanging out with me this morning. I hope you're having your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee. Today we're going to be talking about photo. You know, this channel is photo, video, and tech. We've been doing a lot of Starlink and whatnot. But today is a photo day. Come to find out, Fujifilm is getting cool. Unlike a lot of cameras that are burning up, which we've seen in the past, we're not going to name any names, R5, they've decided to go down the path of cooling or active cooling. I've talked about this many times in the past. I said, listen, active cooling is where it's at. You need to be able to cool these cameras, especially when they're going to record a ton of data quickly. And that's what happens when you're doing movies, right? Whenever you're doing any type of video, it's actually capturing JPEGs, let's say, at a certain rate. Right, so maybe 30 JPEGs per second, 60, 120, 240. However many it's capturing, the more it captures, the harder it is on it. Also, the larger the gamut of color or the bit, right? So if you have 8-bit to 10-bit to 12-bit, 14-bit, 16-bit, the more bits, the more data. The more data, the more heat. And we've talked about this in the past. I've said, listen, when the R5 was first being released, I said, this thing's going to overheat. There's nothing, there's no two ways about it. If there is no inlet and exhaust to be able to take the hot air that this thing is producing or the heat and dissipate it, the thing's going to like nuclear meltdown. Morning. Core overheating. Nuclear meltdown. All right. You just, it just no, there's no way to do it. Now there's a lot of companies that have done an active cooling system. You have Panasonic. They have their G6 now has active cooling. Your S1Hs, as well as Canon on their cinema side, all of their C-series, they all have active cooling. C100, 200, 300, 500, C700, whatever. The entire cinema line has active cooling. And now the R5C, which is that crossover or bridge between what I call a regular mirrorless camera into a cinema mirrorless camera from an R5 into, let's say, cinema, um, that has active cooling also. And of course you have like a Sony FX line, the FX3, for example. A lot of these cameras have active cooling and the reason being is they are prioritizing video over photo. I know there's a lot of photo people out there that are pissed about it and they just want a camera for a camera and they don't want all of the video stuff and they would rather pay a lower cost for a proper camera. The problem is guys, like I've always said, we have moved into a hybrid age, all right? This hybrid age just focuses on video. And when a new camera comes out, what is the first thing we say? What can it shoot? And when we ask that, it's not like how much megapixels does it have, the sensor have, or what the dynamic range is, or some important stuff. We would say, does it shoot 1080, 4K? Does it do 8K? And that's what ended up happening with Canon, right? They started shooting 8K, the thing was not ready for it, and then it just started melting. And now they've kind of fixed it a little bit, but the true fix was the Canon EOS R5C. Anyways, Fujifilm just released a patent for active cooling in their system. Let's get into it, but before I do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. You can get them free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. There's a lot of good ones. There's a prologue to this book right over here, how to create a digital Fort Knox, backing up your digital life, as well as 10 tips of making tack sharp images. There's something in there for everyone. And once again, they're free. Check them out, jchristina.com forward slash books. So anyways, guys, let's get right into this. I'm going to read this portion of the patent to you and then discuss it. And I want to get your thoughts on it. What do you think? is going on here. What do you think they're going to do with this? Now, the patent is basically addressing the problem or they always have to say, this is the problem that we're trying to fix. The description basically says that the problem is to provide an image device and an imaging method, including an imaging unit, basically cooling, right? And the cooling though is for an IBIS system. Now remember guys, an IBIS system comparison to a standard mirrorless is different. It sits in the camera and floats, so to speak. It is attached, but it is a floating sensor. So normally, whenever you're doing any type of active cooling, you are attaching some type of metal, 
right? Some type of plate, could be a copper plate or whatever, to the problem area and then dissipating the heat off that, okay? Allowing the heat to radiate through the metal and then you cool the metal, hence cooling the problem area. Well, with IBIS, they don't have that luxury because once again, the sensor is floating. So this is how they propose to fix it. Conventionally, in an image pickup apparatus provided with a camera shake correction mechanism, i.e. IBIS or in-body image stabilization, a technique for cooling an image pickup element has been proposed. In recent years, an image pickup device may be used to shoot a high quality moving image for a long time. Once again, capturing video. Any type of video is where we're getting into problems because you are running the sensor, you're running the device for a long period of time. It's not for a single shutter release, right? It's for extended. Now they continue by saying, the image pickup device is preferably used in an appropriate temperature range. Shooting high quality moving images consumes a lot of power and the heat generated from the image pickup device exceeds the appropriate temperature range. Once again, as you're capturing a lot more data and a lot quicker, it produces heat and heat is the bane of all electronics, right? We need to cool the electronics so they will have to shut themselves off if not, they will nuke and no longer be functioning. They continue. In high quality video shooting for a long time, the image pickup device activates a protection function such as forcibly terminating the shooting when the temperature exceeds an appropriate temperature range for the protection of the device and the safety of the photographer. Obviously, you don't want this thing to catch on fire or melt in your hands. Therefore, it may not be possible to secure a significant shooting time when shooting a high quality moving image. Further, in the case of repeated shooting, if there is no time interval in which the temperature of the image pickup device, which has risen during the previous use, falls to appropriate range, it is not possible to secure a significant shooting time. So what they're saying here is if you don't let the camera sit for long enough and allow it to cool down, the next time you use it, you're going to only be able to shoot for a shorter period of time. And that's exactly what was happening with the Canon R5, right guys? You would shoot for a specific period of time and then you'd have to let it cool for another specific period of time and then shoot and then let it cool and then shoot and let it cool. And Canon even came out with an advisory saying this is how much time that you can use it for how much time you have to let it sit. People don't want to sit for stuff, right? They don't want to wait and they don't want to go spend the money on like a Canon EOS C-series camera, right? A cinema camera that has the active cooling. So once again, they came out with the R5C and other cameras that have the active cooling in it. And now Fuji is doing the exact same thing. Further, in an image pickup device with a camera shake correction function, obviously IBIS or in-body image stabilization, since the heat generating image pickup element is always floating at the time of shooting, it is structurally difficult to dissipate the heat generated from the image pickup element. Once again, it is floating. It's hard to adhere things to it so that you can dissipate the heat. And this is where this patent comes in. The image pickup unit includes three heat pipes. The heat pipes are heat transporters that transport heat. The heat pipes are installed on the sheet metal of the cooling device. Further, the other end of the heat pipes is installed in the heat sink. As a result, the heat generated by the cooling device is transported by the heat pipes and can be cooled by force cooling mechanism at the transport destination. So what they're trying to do is take the floating sensor and attach these pipes to it and transport the heat to the metal, let's say plate inside a piece of copper or whatnot that is stationary. As a result, it is not always necessary to equip the sheet metal of the cooling device with the force cooling device and the space inside of the image pickup device main body can be effectively used. So what I see here is there's two things. Number one, they have the actual sensor itself with pipes coming off it that do connect to a solid or an affixed type of sheet metal. Let's call it a piece of copper. So the heat will then travel through these pipes to the copper and then we have the active cooling or the fan blowing on that to cool the entire system. Very, very interesting. What I don't understand is they say that the 
inside of the body itself would be enough to do this cooling. My question would be here, are they going to have an inlet and an exhaust, or are they just going to move the heat through out of the camera so that the entire camera heats up instead of just the sensor itself? I don't know. That to me wouldn't make any sense. So I don't understand that part of the patent. Maybe someone else has read this. Maybe you have an idea. If you do, in the comment area, let me know. Once again, are they going to have an inlet and exhaust? They should, but who knows? Maybe they don't need it based on the amount of heat that they are producing. I really don't know. But once again, I want to know what you think. So anyways, guys, Fujifilm is getting cool. <laughs> just like a lot of other companies, right? A lot of people are just seeing the writing on the wall and they understand that as they get faster and faster and they're capturing more and more data, it produces heat. Heat is the bane of electronics. And if you have a floating sensor or IBIS or in-body image stabilization, it's very hard to dissipate the heat. So this is the way that they are posing to do it. Another question that I have is, are these pipes going to be solid or are they going to be like foil or something? And the reason I say that, obviously it has to be thicker than a foil. You would think that these pipes would have to move also, right? So if the pipes are moving, they can't be solid pipes or the unit couldn't move. Hmm. Once again, what do you think? I want to know your thoughts on this. If you enjoyed this even a little bit, throw the video a thumbs up. That would be helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you have not and click this button over here. See that little bell? Click that bell and when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like, and if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. Love you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.